John G. Webb is from St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. The subject, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, patient selection and adoption, real world considerations. As this moves into the real world, there's still a few debates here and there. So on this particular debate, what, uh, what are you talking about? What are the issues that are important to you? Oh, gee, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of issues right now. Um, you know, the questions with TAVI has been what's the, what's the mortality risk with the procedure? What's the risk of stroke? Uh, what's the risk of uh, 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 how reliable are the valves and in terms of durability and, and what kind of uh, valvular hemodynamics can you expect? These are all questions that are starting to be answered now. So I think we're, we're getting a lot further ahead than we were four years ago in terms of understanding this. At the same time, I think we now have data that shows that uh, uh, TAVR is uh, superior to medical management in patients who can't have surgery, and it's a pretty good alternative, at least the femoral approach is, uh, potentially for patients who are at high risk for surgery. And I think the question that was being asked in the article is, is what's the room for this to expand further into intermediate and low-risk patients? We have uh, valves that now that have uh, proven midterm durability, perhaps not uh, long-term durability, but certainly we have good uh, five-year uh, data showing the valve is durable to that length of time. Certainly that, that's kind of an adequate uh, lifespan for the uh, valves uh, going into these uh, non-surgical candidates. Often uh, five years is pretty good, and, and five years isn't the end of it. At five years, we're still working fine. So I think we're looking at valves that are going to last maybe 10 years. I mean, who knows? But at the end of the day, it turns out that valve and valve implants are, are very, very feasible. So this is a repeatable procedure to some extent. I think that we have uh, mortality that's still relatively high in, in, uh, in a lot of series and uh, at the, at the present time, but the, you know, the data we're getting is still first generation devices. Uh, partner, of course, was 24 French sheets, but you know, in the rest of the world, other than the United States, uh, this is an 18 French procedure, not a 24 French procedure. Um, the instance of vascular complications falls dramatically. Um, you're going to be hearing about 16 and 14 French uh, really low profile devices uh, uh, at these meetings. and and we're headed actually even lower than that. So I think the vascular complications you find in high volume centers using state-of-the-art equipment is falling from 17% major vascular complications in partner to, you know, down to the low single digits. And we're looking at a procedure that can be realistically done even in high-risk patients with a mortality that's in the low single digits. So the question then is if we can, if we can do um, uh, uh, TAVR in the high-risk patients with mortalities of two, three, four, five, six, seven percent, how low can we get the mortality in patients who are at intermediate risk, say, uh, you know, three, four percent surgical risk of mortality. And, and I think that, to be honest, we're getting to be there in many centers. There was a criticism recently that this is expanding too fast for a new procedure, but in point of fact, this seems to me to be the most thoughtful rollout of any new device in years, if not ever. Well, you know, it, it varies from country to country. There's, there's countries where this is a, 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 a small fraction of the AVR is being done, but there's other countries where this is uh, really uh, expanding extremely rapidly. Many centers in Europe where TABOR rates are now 40% of AVRs, 20, 40%, uh, much higher than the United States. So perhaps this is a bit too rapid. And uh, certainly there's a lot of centers starting. There's certainly a learning curve with this procedure. So there's a, there's a good argument for restricting this and releasing it in a very controlled fashion with good training, high volume centers. There's a real argument against not expanding it to every center. You know, in the United States, you've got over a thousand cardiac surgical centers. The average numbers of AVRs per center is around 80. The average number of AVR per surgeon is only seven or eight, amazingly low. And, uh, and uh, if you start diluting that, uh, you, you may not get quite the good results you get in high volume centers.